Aguaging the Sanatorium. Story by Winoa LaDuc. Screenplay by Michael O'Rourke. Fade in, exterior, Minnesota State Sanatorium, night, 1920. A hint of the northern lights in the star-filled sky over a snow-covered forest that skirts the bleak grounds of a granite Gothic dormitory. The voice of the narrator is a 90-year-old woman who speaks with a clear, unmistakable Res Indian accent. When piss freezes in Minnesota's north woods, the snow falls deep on their medicine trees. That's when the animals and spirits sleep. That's when we tell stories. Title. Minnesota State Sanatorium, 1920. On the grounds, there is another dormitory, one story, wood framed, and strangely, all of its windows are open. We were sent to the State Sanatorium. Aya, ah, yeah. my sister Margaret Oshkina and I, we had tuberculosis. That sickness took hold of a lot of us Indians on reservations up north, and the trees had no medicine for the white man's coughing sickness. Interior Sanatorium Children's Ward, night. A dozen children sleep fitfully in single hospital beds that line the long, narrow, and open beam dormitory. So that Indian agent removed us to the sanatorium to get the quick cure. We called that place Aguajing. A breeze from the open awning style windows dances with snow devils in and out of shadows. Aguajing, that's Ojibwe for outside. Every night, all the windows were opened wide to allow the fresh wind to carry away the sickness. Margaret, nine, and Charlotte, eleven, Ashkina, Ojibwe sisters ravaged by tuberculosis, huddled under wool blankets in side-by-side -side twin beds at one end of the ward. Ah, yeah, that's how they chose to cure us at Aguajing that winter. Insert. A thermometer inside reads 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Interior, sanatorium, doctor's office, day. Flashback. Title, three months ago. In a small, whitewashed room, the Ashkina sisters, pale in patched coats, stare wide-eyed at the overworked white doctor, 40s, speaks to a white nurse, 40s, viewing a chart on a clipboard. Charlotte coughs. Nurse, these two admitted today their names? Charlotte and Margaret Ashkina. Sir? Yes? Are you the medicine man? Not at all. I'm the head doctor of the hosp this hospital. Mama asked us to give this to you. She hands him a small packet wrapped in red cloth. Tobacco. Medicine to pray with. I don't pray, but thank you. Nurse, put these sisters on strict bed rest. Yes, doctor. As she marks the sisters' charts. Come, children, bring your trunk. The sisters pick up a trunk labeled Ashkina and follow the nurses out. Doctor toss the doctor tosses the gifts of tobacco into a drawer, reviews patient charts on his desk, and flashback. Exterior, sanatorium, children's ward, night. North wind flicks snow on Charlotte's wool blanket. Ninji Kaj, I'm so cold. Margaret eyes the heavy blanket covering the nurse snoozing in a chair at the opposite end of the ward. Ninji Kaj, Nimi Sen. Margaret tentatively steps out of her bed in a night shift, take, takes quick, small steps that scatter ice crystals on the cold floor, and stops at the nurse's chair. Margaret shakily pulls at the nurse's blanket, revealing she's bundled up in a U.S. Army wool coat. Just as Margaret has all but freed the blanket, the nurse rolls onto one side, sleepily pulls it out of Margaret's grasp, wraps the blanket around her shoulders. Frightened, Margaret skitters like a mouse back to her bed, grabs her blanket, quickly throws it over her sister, and burrows under the covers with her. Oh, Nimisen, you are so cold. Margaret shivers, rubs heat into her sister's thin body. Charlotte coughs again and again. Margaret gathers her closer, rocking, rocking, kissing her. Beyond the open window, past the snow on the horizon, colored lights undulate in a slow dance with the night sky. See? The Jibayag Nimi Idiwag. Aya, the northern lights. What would mother say? Ninji Kaj. Ikodon Minawa Daga. Long, long ago. Aya, it was so warm in our lodge when she told it. Please tell the story. Long ago, a brave man. What was his name? Gini Mugadime. Ah, yeah, I remember. It is the war eagle. What does he see across the lake? Shadows dressed for a great dance. Does he follow the shadows? One by one, children cloaked in blankets gradually come from their beds to sit with the sisters. Ah, yeah, in his canoe, and when he gets to shore on the shadow side, they turn and hiss at him. Jimmy, the most attentive child, is closest to Margaret. Why? You don't belong with us, they say. Go away. He is thinking 
I'll find my own path to the land of souls. Aya, Nishime, his own path. What happens next? On both sides of his path is a forest of medicine pine, and just above the tree line, like arrows on the edge of the world that shoot up into the night, he sees that village beneath the Jibbeyang Nimi Idewag. Suddenly, the nurse snorts loudly, shifts noisily in her chair, and the children scurry back to their beds. When she settles into her snore again, they tiptoe back into the story. What happens to War Eagle? Women greet him at the village gate. This is the destination of the souls, one of them says. This is where we dance and feast. Is it our mothers who greet them? Aya, our mothers greet him and dance in their jingle dresses with all the souls, happy and at peace. Is anybody sick there? Kanishime. In that place there is only joy in the dance. Charlotte is nearly asleep, peaceful now. That is the Jibayag Nimi Iduag. That is where our mother dances. Can she see us? Ah, yeah, she can see us. She is always with us. In the open windows, the northern lights dance above old growth medicine pipe. Interior, sanatorium, children's ward, early next morning. The nurse makes her morning rounds, wakes the children who have returned to their assigned beds, gives them pills. Charlotte stirs, wakes to how cold she is. The bed is cold, the bed is wet. Margaret's arm lays across her chest. Nishime, gosh cozy. Little sister, wake up. No breath, no warmth. Charlotte rocks Margaret's body back and forth, singing softly. Way, hey, hey, way, hey, hey, way, hey, hey. The nurse softly caresses Charlotte, who begins singing a Christian hymn in Ojibwe. Kaginig, mino chumani, minwa, bigoning, nig. It's all right, it's all right. Mi ite goni nibawen kabesh kaj mako. Charlotte extricates herself from the blankets and her sister's body, walks over the cold floor and out the door. The nurse clucks over Margaret. She's gone. I didn't think she would go. She was the strong one. The small children sit up in their beds with big, sad eyes. Interior sanatorium storeroom later. A whitewashed room with coats on hooks, boots in neat rows, stacks of trunks labeled with Ojibwe surnames. Charlotte opens the Ashkina trunk, retrieves beaded moccasins, and holds them close to her heart. Margaret, Nishime, my younger sister, these are the traveling shoes our mother made for you. Traveling shoes to the Jibayag Nimidiwag. She finds a paisley dress with a beaded yoke in the trunk. You can travel with this dress to it too. She puts on a coat and bundles the moccasins in the dress. Interior sanatorium children's ward day. Charlotte, with her coat on, clutches the small bundle of Margaret's traveling clothes as she follows the nurse, who carries her sister's body in a blanket out the door. Interior sanatorium morgue, day. The nurse lays the body on a wooden slab. Charlotte lays the traveling clothes at her sister's head. Interior sanatorium gothic dormitory, day. Walls and floors of stone. Charlotte slips through the hallways behind counters up stairwells. All at once, she steps around a corner into the path of the doctor and an orderly discussing, dis discussing contemporary European remedies for tuberculosis. She shoots out of sight into interior sanatorium elders ward, continuous. Winter light floods a large room with rows and rows of beds for convalescent elderly Indian patients. Charlotte scoots under the bed of an old woman. When the shoes of the doctor and the orderly come into her view, Charlotte hears the doctor speak. Could do better here with the French vaccine, but the traditionals won't hear of it. You mean the medicine men? I mean the old people like this old woman here. Me no gigi zip. Yes, yes, Alice, no time to chat. Me no both pairs of shoes move off. You little scamp, what are you doing under my bed? Come out now, so I can see your light. Charlotte comes out from under the bed. Elder Ward. Turn around now. Prove to me you are not a mouse. Charlotte turns around to find Weiwei Yumigoki, an ancient woman whose skin hangs on her bones like burlap bags, her eyes clear, her voice strong. Ani, I see your light. Nidanis. Uzu Anin. I see your light too, Nukomis. I remember you from the drum ceremonies. You gave us maple sugar sweets. Nindizinikas. Wewe you. Wewe you migoki. Nidanis. Nishime, my younger sister is dead. Can you help? What do you need, Nidanis? 
I need to dress her and send her on her soul journey. Nin we do kazu. I will help. Charlotte helps Weiwei Yumigoki to stand. Old Ojibwe faces ravaged by tuberculosis gaze at them. Interior sanatorium morgue day. Margaret lays on the table in her paisley dress with the beaded yoke and her hair braided. Weiwei Yumigoki and Charlotte pace her small feet in the beaded moccasins. These are good traveling shoes. Did you beat them? Ni mama. Our mother beaded them. Weiwei Yumagoki smiles, places a beaded medicine pouch in Margaret's hand, closing the t- her tiny fingers over it. She then whispers an Ojibwe prayer over the body. Interior sanatorium, elders ward later. Charlotte sits with Weiwei Yumagoki on her bed, pinching tobacco onto small squares of red cotton. This asima, this tobacco, when tied up in this red cloth in a good way, makes a prayer. It will make a blessing for your sister. Good medicine for you too. They tie the red tobacco squares onto a cotton string. Exterior sanatorium cemetery day. A priest mumbles a Christian prayer, sprinkles holy water on a burial mound with a rough cut wooden cross. Moving on, he leaves Charlotte alone. From her coat pocket, Charlotte withdraws the red prayer ties, which she hangs on the cross. From her other pocket, she takes a paper parcel, which contains her lunch. She places the food on her sister's grave. Jimmy approaches her quietly, sits with her. Together they sing an honor song. Dissolve to Interior Sanatorium Children's Ward, Night. Alone now, Charlotte sings the honor song while sitting up in, in bed wrapped in her sister's blanket. All the windows are wide open, all the children fitfully asleep. I stayed up all night seeing mother and my sister dance with the Jibayag Mimi Idiwag. The jingles on their dresses sparkled like stars. Young Charlotte's small voice is joined by sweet drumming and the sound of jingle dresses. Fade out to the end.